<laughs> if anyone is also on the West Coast and it's 7 a.m. and they're having their first cup of coffee, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Or if anyone is on the East Coast and stayed up really late last night, I'm in Florida right now, drop it in the comments. <laughs> or if anyone is really happy it's Friday and that you <laughs> spend an hour with Rachel and I, let us know. Oh my and God. with that, welcome to today's masterclass where we're going to dive in to three ways that you can win clients on social media as a freelancer. And we are with Rachel. She is the queen of social media, top social media marketer and consultant, our very own U.S. brand ambassador, and, and even has a her own book, which is insane. So, Rachel, thank you for being here today. Oh, Aniston, thank you for having me. You guys, I'm so excited about today. Anyone want just like a really chill but also amazing set of strategies for securing clients because we're going to dive into a few different things today. And I'm kind of excited because some of this stuff I've never really taught in this way before ah, this first time. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys three ways to secure clients or more clients specifically from social media without having to spend money on ads. You guys excited? Drop a yes. Um, we're also going to talk a little bit. Have you ever heard the word persuasion used in marketing? Everyone talks about how persuasion is such a big thing. And I'm going to share a completely different approach to persuasion that can actually support you and support your clients way better. Uh, anyone ever feel like persuasion can feel kind of icky? You hear it and you're like, think of, you know, manipulation. We're not going there today. Cool. We're going to talk about how to make persuasion an amazing, ethical, incredible thing that makes your client say, oh my gosh, I love this person so much. And we're also going to dive into, I, I'm considering it, depending on how engaged you guys are, I have one of my favorite workflows for creating way more content consistently. Drop a yes if you guys are already interested in that. But you have to be hyped for it because it's really exciting. And I don't want to share it if you guys are like, wah, wah. Fair? <laughs> We're going to talk about reporting. Would anyone like to save time on reporting for clients? Um, how to schedule everything in one place? And even how to basically create a set of recurring automatic automated content so that even if you go on a vacation, you've got content going out at least in some places. You guys cool about that? Oh, it's good to see Ashley again. I literally spent oh, two weeks with Ashley. That's so fun. Okay, so let's dive on in, you guys. Um, the first thing that I want to share with you, and this is really big, before we go into the three ways to secure clients, um, is everybody talks about a USP or a UVP, your unique value proposition, right? And sometimes this makes us feel kind of lost, Anyone know exactly what I'm talking about? You hear it and as a freelancer, you're like, I don't know what mine is. Um, when I hear the sentence or the phrase unique value proposition, I actually think your UVP is in that phrase. You can be the person who gives the most value. Value can be your unique proposition in business. And I'm just going to tell you, it is one of the fastest ways to not have to convince clients, but rather have people say, I binged your content for the last year. I love what you put out there. I want to work with you. And sometimes it works even faster than that. I found you in the last two months and I can't stop watching. And how do I work with you? You guys excited about that? Um, now, everything that I'm going to teach you is going to be pretty dang accessible. You guys cool with that? I'm not going to teach you anything that tells you you have to spend three hours a day creating content because I don't. I can't. Who here is busy? I've got a life, right? <laughs> I got three busy kids, two horses. Life is intense, isn't it? So we're going to make things simple. Uh, this one is not in Spanish. Nosotros podríamos hablar en español, pero a veces no sé las palabras para... <laughs> okay, so... I don't know that you struggle Spanish. <laughs> oh, that was Just good. A little. I do speak a little <laughs> French too, but I've got super rusty, so I got to work on that one. Okay, so um, has anyone ever heard the word omnipresence used? People are like, you need to be everywhere. 
just hearing that is exhausting. Can I get a yes in the chat if you guys feel me on that? Because I don't know about you, when people are like, you have to be everywhere, you have to be a content machine, it's nonstop, go, go, go. I'm like, done, bored, no thanks. Um, yet, question for you, who here has seen my content pretty consistently on social media? A lot of people say the first time they open the app, every single time, they see my content. So I'm on social consistently everywhere. And it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes per day to create content max. You guys cool with that? So I'm going to share with you how to do omnipresence in like five, 10 minutes per day. You guys cool with that? So I want to share one thing that is super important. Who here ever thinks about creating content to attract clients and you instantly go blank? They're like, how in the world am I going to convince these clients to work with me? <laughs> right? So I'm going to share a smarter way to go about it. You guys cool with smarter ways? Um, this is the process of, and I want you guys to actually write this in the chat and feel free to take notes. Um, this is competitor analysis. Competitor analysis. The second thing we're going to do with that is do a process called content modeling. So we're going to do competitor analysis. This is us being really smart with how we're going to create content and then modeling content based on what is already performing. Now, have you ever heard um, that quote that says, if I needed to chop down a tree and I only had 10 hours, I would sharpen my blade for nine hours? Mm -hmm. Anyone ever heard that? That is kind of the equivalent sharpening your blade of research and planning things out before you hit go so that you don't sit in front of the screen and be like, I can't think of anything smart. I have nothing left to say. <laughs> you do three pieces of content. You're like, well, I don't know anything else. <laughs> so I'm going to share this with you guys because this has been a game changer. Okay. So let's go ahead. And I think I should be able to share my screen, which is kind of cool. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a peek. So what is your favorite social media platform? Feel free to drop it in the chat. The platform that you love the most is where I generally recommend doing your competitor research. I find the best competitor research is actually done usually on Twitter, uh, Instagram, but we're going to talk about Instagram later, or Facebook. Those are my favorite ones to do competitor research. Now, real fast, why this is so powerful, who here has ever sat down to do research <laughs> And before you know it, you are in the black hole, the vortex of scrolling and watching content. And suddenly before you know it, all your research time is down the hole. It's gone because you just researched, 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 watched 15 videos. Suddenly you're on like cat TikTok and you're like, how's that happening? So I'm going to share a way that you can actually do research without getting sucked into that. You guys cool with that? Okay. I, I'm going to write down one. I'm going to have you guys write down one more thing because this is a big one. If you're going to um, be scrolling on social, make sure that that is separate from work time. Make sure that that is intentional time because spending two hours in the middle of your workday scrolling, that's two hours <laughs> that you literally could have been doing anything else or finishing your work early or heading to go do something really fun that you're excited about, right? Or you could go watch a movie. Why not? So when you're in that scroll mode, make sure you're not thinking that you're in work mode. So if you catch yourself scrolling, be like, nope, scroll mode is for when I'm sitting in the carpool lane. Scroll mode is for when it's the end of the day. But intentionally separate your scroll time. And this is a way to do that. You guys cool with that? All right. Let's go ahead and pull this bad boy in. We've got a screen share for you, Aniston. Let's roll it on up. Okay. So this is Metrical. And Metrical has a fantastic competitor analysis. What I love about this is I don't even have to uh, log into social. I don't have to open an app but yet I can still do my research without getting distracted. And we're going to actually use Twitter for today. So we're going to use Twitter. And 
we've got all these awesome reports, right? Sometimes they're fun to look at. Sometimes you're like, oh, yeah, that wasn't a good month. Um, but we're going to go ahead and scroll all the way down to this section here called competitors. And this is a place where you can add your competitors on in. So I personally have four people who I know get decent engagement. Three of them are super good engagement. Um, one of them is halfway decent. But so we've got Justin Welch. We've got Marie Forleo, Team Gary V, and Sean Cannell. I want you to think of a few people who are in your exact same industry who are crushing it. Think of a few people in your industry. And big tip, go for the people who are bigger because they're going to have more data for you to look in on. Okay? So, for example, if you're in YouTube, Sean Cannell is a great one. If you're in Instagram, Brock Johnson's fantastic. But look for someone who is creating on a big scale. Okay? So, I have a question for you. So, yeah. So because as as we all know, you're you're a little bit of a viral sensation. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, for, so for those little guys that mm -hmm. you know, small business owners that yep. may have a little bit less engagement, how would you suggest that they find their competitors that are you know a little bit equal playing field? I guess. Um, one of my favorite ways to find people is to go to any platform and search for the keywords for the industry mm -hmm. and then see the biggest pages, channels, posts, um, and, and the profiles that are getting the most engagement, putting out the most content. Yeah. So for example, in, if it's a really niched down, like brick and mortar, mm -hmm. I would probably go with someone in that industry that is yep. similar, but not exactly the same. Cool. Yep. You got it. Helpful. Everyone helpful. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning just. It's, by listening. It. <laughs> it's so fun. Okay. So we're going to take a peek. I actually love to look at Justin's content because it, I get a lot of inspiration from his content. So I'm going to go to this section here that says more stats. And then what I'm going to do, I don't need to necessarily look at his growth or his likes. Like, that's all awesome. But I want to see his content. Right now we're on Twitter that is performing the best. So I'm going to go to rows per page, either 100 or 500. So I'm going to do 100 today. And then I can sort that content based on likes, retweets, and engagement. Drop a yes in the chat if you're excited about this because isn't this neat? I think this is pretty powerful. Now, what's cool about this, let's go ahead and do, I'm going to do retweets because that's a pretty strong indication of engagement. I see some gorgeous opportunities for content modeling right here. Okay. Look at this. Every piece of advice I could think of after four years as a solopreneur. Now, this is obviously a part of a Twitter thread, but that gives me an idea. Um, Here's another one. You can get a lot of free time back by simply not having an opinion on everything. Mm -hmm. um, real fast, the important thing about content modeling is it is not stealing. It's not taking someone else's content and just changing a word or two. It's, okay, I like this, but I'm going to create my own version of it. So for And I'll model that real fast. So for example, you can get a lot of free time back by simply not having an opinion on everything, I could say you would have many more hours in the day if you became aware of when you're scrolling on social media. And that would probably crush it. Pretty cool, right? Um, who's loving this process, you guys? Isn't this a neat one? So I like to then sit and kind of just go through and take from the most engaged ones and content model based on this. Now, you can do this on other platforms as well. Facebook can be a good one. Facebook's not my strongest one. My Facebook profile, or sorry, my Facebook page. My profile's hopping, and I'm going to teach you guys how to do that in just a second. But Let's go ahead and dive on in. Let's see if I have any competitors. I don't. So let's go ahead and add someone. Let's add Russell Brunson because I know his page is always hopping. So let's go ahead and take a peek at Russell's most engaged content. And this will just take a moment to load. Pretty cool, right? Yep. And change it completely, but you've got the essence of it. Isn't that cool? 
That's so. a good clarification because I feel like a lot of people just think that it's stealing or almost plagiarizing and that's not not what we want to do. <laughs> yeah. So this will take a second because he's got a lot of content to pull up. So if we have to, we can skip it. But when you go into the Facebook competitors um, section, you're going to see more long form content. And that will sometimes give you really great ideas for creating content. Now, remember, you want to sort by most engaged, most views, most shares, most likes, depending on the platform, most retweets. And that process allows you to not have to guess what to create. Mm -hmm. Cool, right? Okay. Oh if we have this available on our free version or the our premium and you can add up to five competitors in our free version which is amazing and then in the premium one it it just increases from there so, so with our free platform you can look at your competitors and have all of those in-depth analytics of what you just pulled up so really great beautiful um drop the link to metrical because you guys you can use this completely for free Pretty cool, right? Now, if you want to try premium for 30 days, you guys can use code Rachel, and I don't make anything from that. So that's important for you guys to know. I don't get an affiliate commission or anything. It's just the code that we created because it's easy for me to remember. So you'll get 30 <laughs> days free of Metricool Premium. Okay, who here loves this process of content modeling? It's going to save you so much time from scrolling. It's going to give you a clear indication of like, this is the type of content that I want to create. Now, here's what I love about this. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard that, that early adopters, people who are trying to like innovate, you can tell who they are because they're the ones that are face down in the mud with arrows in their back. <laughs> Super dramatic. But the point is, we can learn so much from what has already worked and from recipes and models that already work. Does that make sense? You can, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can say, okay, this type of topic has worked really well for other people. This would be a good one for me to use to reach my audience. Okay. Now let's take a peek real fast at Russell's just because I want to see a little more of that longer form content. So Let's go ahead and take a peek and then you can actually pop them out so you can see the actual like full post, which is kind of cool. And this is sorted. I'm going to do this. I'm going to sort by either engagement rate or comments or shares because these are my fave. I like shares because I've noticed that shares um, are, are an indication that a content piece is crushing it. So let's go ahead and take a peek. Ready? And this pops it open so we can see the post. And it is a motivational quote, which is cool because we're going to be getting into that later. Do you guys like it? Would you say that shares? So I guess if you're ranking kind of engagement, would shares be the that top or what would you say? Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> I know that sounds, I've got a funny job about that. So a share me means that even if you don't get as much engagement on the original post, it is reaching a new network of people. So my content that gets the most shares tends to do the best for the longest. Like it has the longest shelf life. It keeps performing. Um, and then you kind of get into like first connection shares, second degree shares, third, and it just can keep expanding. That's actually how my first viral video origin or vi viral post actually went viral back in 2016. People were sharing it and then their friends were sharing it and then more people were sharing it. And soon I didn't, I was like seven connections away from the people sharing, which is pretty cool. Um, if you want to share that link to that Facebook yeah, post, of you can see the example, that would be amazing. Okay. Who loves this process already? Okay. We're going to dive on in to omnipresence. Now, I'm going to go ahead and stop my share for a second. When it comes to omnipresence, the biggest thing you want to think of is working smarter. Drop a yes if you are all in, all in. And by the <laughs> way, guys, if we have time at the end. I will answer some questions. So it depends on how intense today is. Um, when I create a piece of content, I like to ask myself, 
can I see this performing on multiple platforms? And one of the single fastest ways to do that is by creating short form video. Now, I personally create, and this is a process I call domino content. Domino content. So I personally create my short form video content, which is vertical and up to 60 seconds. You can do longer, but I don't recommend it. Um, I create mine in TikTok. So that is my first domino. Then I'm going to follow the process that I just showed you guys. And all of this takes five or 10 minutes per day, which is pretty nice. If you're doing a lot of content like I am, it might take you 20 or 30 minutes. Cool. So TikTok, IG Reels, YouTube Shorts, Facebook page, and even, ready for this? This is a new, hot, up-and-coming one, even though it's not new at all, your Facebook profile. So these are the easiest ones to repurpose to. So one piece of content created that takes five minutes now is able to help grow and reach your dream clients on five different platforms. Drop a yes in the chat if that's exciting to you. You can also, I don't personally do this, but I know a lot of people who do who have had success, um, Twitter and LinkedIn are two more platforms you can share these to. And if you're familiar with Pinterest, you can use it as an idea pin as well. Pretty cool, right? But we're going to focus on at least four of these today, okay? So what I like to do, um, promoting the rest of your platforms in TikTok probably shouldn't be the focus. I would focus on building that platform and building the others. There are ways to build other platforms with other platforms, but I'm a huge fan of kind of building each one independently with a few exceptions. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to specifically repurpose to um, from TikTok, and you can use IG Reels as your domino content if you'd like, to IG Reels, to YouTube Shorts, to your Facebook page. And then I'm going to show one more little step that's really been working. Drop a yes if you'd be open to using your personal profile, like limiting your uh, post to just friends except for your Reels, and using that to grow even more so. Drop a yes in the chat. Good question. So studies have shown that scheduling itself is not what reduces reach. What reduces reach is the set it and forget it mentality. So a lot of people without doing research, without analyzing, without tweaking things, without going in there and engaging, they just set all of their social media up on um, a content rotation, never bother to check if it's working, never adjust anything. Maybe they didn't even research or learn what works. And then they're like, what the heck? This is reducing my reach. And it's like, no, it just wasn't super great content. Just being super honest. I, I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather just be super honest. It's not going to reach people, even if it was scheduled natively within the platform or even posted. Okay, so I'm going to share this process with you guys of how to repurpose quickly. You guys cool with that? Drop a yes. This is a fun day, isn't it? This is a fun one. Okay. I'm just, I'm just hanging in the back, just learning, taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to walk you guys through my exact process. And this is kind of a neat one. Um, let's go ahead and pull this on in. So I have created um, some different TikToks that are awesome. I'm just going to be super awesome. Let's go ahead and pull my screen share in. Beautiful. And I'm going to go ahead and grab one of those. These are my most recent ones. So I'm going to you know, record my TikTok, my short form piece of content. Um, real fast heads up. I go more into depth in this in other trainings, but the format that I like for short form video content that performs almost every single time is hook, 
So that's the first couple of seconds you hook people's attention in with a well-crafted hook. And then value, value, so sharing your value, and then a call to action. Now, my call to action is simple. It's usually follow for more, follow for more tips. Who here says that is a very simple formula? And let me just tell you, you guys, it works. You can see it here, right? We've got pretty decent views almost 100% of the time. Of course, I do have some flops, but I'm pretty pleased with the results of that formula. Who's going to try it? Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to make sure this is muted, and I'm going to pull up my TikTok video. So I'm going to copy this link here. Okay, copy link. And then I'm going to open a site called snaptick.app. I'm going to paste the link here. Now, this is, I don't like their mobile app. I don't like it on mobile. I am only a fan of the free version on desktop, and I've tried all the different versions, okay? So I'm going to paste it here, and then it's going to look super spammy, like a, an ad could pop up right here, but you just close the ad, and then you download it, and this removes the watermark so that reach isn't reduced, okay, when you share it to other platforms. Now, the reason this works so well, you guys, is when I create original audio content that's evergreen, it can perform no matter when I share it on other platforms. There will never be an issue with the sound being muted. I'll never have to worry about pairing up the sound um, later when I have to schedule it. Who here already likes this process? It's pretty simple, okay? Then I'm gonna actually make my life a thousand times easier and I'm gonna copy this, at least for a couple of the platforms. So I've got my caption and my hashtags from TikTok, and I'm gonna to go to planning. You can tell I'm overdue for some content, but most of my content is on the rotation that I'm gonna show you guys in just a moment. Um, but I'm overdue for some video. It's just been a, it's just been a long week with lots of video, so okay. I'm going to go ahead and this is kind of neat because um, you can actually check the best times to post for Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram inside of Metricool's planning tab. So I think it's pretty neat. Um, my, my, my problem platform is Instagram. So I'm going to schedule based on the best times to post. So the darker pink it is, the better the time to post. So it looks like my audience is most active in the morning when they're supposed to be working. Perfect. All right. Now up here, I'm going to pick which platforms I want to repurpose to. I could do Twitter. I haven't tried that one yet. Um, but I'm going to do that one separately. So I've got my IG reel. There's post story and then there's real. I'm going to do TikTok and I'm going to do YouTube shorts. Heck, let's also do Facebook. Facebook real. So one simple step just allowed us to post our content to four additional platforms. Do you guys real fast see why it's so important? I guess I could skip TikTok, sorry, three additional platforms. Do you guys see why this would be so powerful for saving time and just getting content out there? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add the video I just downloaded. Easy peasy. And I'm gonna use the same exact caption. Now I can choose if, if I want to stick with that schedule time and you can see the preview, which is kind of cool. You can see it for Facebook, beautiful, Instagram, gorgeous, and YouTube shorts. Okay. You also see the, at the top where it says edit by network, this is one of our newest features. So you can specifically edit in case there's any issues or there's any requirements for each mm -hmm. platform which is amazing because you save so much time. You don't have to go to each platform. You can literally do however all different platforms in one place, which is amazing. Oh, 
I haven't even used this yet. So I'm super excited because now I can add Twitter and LinkedIn where I would change yeah. the captions just slightly. So let's go ahead and edit by network. You guys want to do this in real time. Now, real fast on YouTube, there's one tweak that needs to happen, which anyone who's posted a YouTube video is familiar with. And that is that you have to add a title. So for example, I might just use this right here as the title. That is a gorgeous title. And I might drop the hashtags completely because I have a YouTube shorts bio that I use already. And no, it's not made for kids. So don't show it to any. Okay, <laughs> LinkedIn, I'm gonna remove a couple of hashtags. I've found that generally speaking, when I use one to three hashtags on LinkedIn, it works the best. And then on Twitter, oh, on Twitter, I'm just going to tweak it because hashtags are much more minimal on Twitter. So looks good, right? We're going to go ahead and that's actually past time. So let's go ahead and do uh, 12 p.m. Perfect. And if you're not sure which hashtags to post, we have an amazing feature. It's a hashtag generator. So if you're inside the planner and if you tap on the little hashtag um, icon, you can type in, so say for example, Rachel put social media marketing, then mm -hmm. it will generate similar hashtags related to your content and show you the number of uses which is really nice if you're like i don't know what to use i don't know what's popular that's a super easy way to grab those hashtags um i do want to answer this real fast what can you post to get your first client follow the process of content modeling from competitor research lots of value and follow the format generally speaking of hook value cta that works for posts as well okay who here is liking this? So I per first post on TikTok and then I use SnapTik to remove the watermark. And then I repurpose to the other platforms uh, using Metrical. And that works really well because I can do up to, gosh, what was that? Five platforms in one, one go, which is pretty neat. Um, who here sees that this is like totally doable? Actually, pretty simple, pretty fast. It only took me longer because I was explaining it. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, we'll drop a code for Metrical for sure. Okay, so uh, there's one more thing for people who are a little more advanced. If you're already advanced, you can feel free. Now, I'm going to use advanced language. So if you don't know how to do this, don't stress um, or write it down and, and Google it. But you can airdrop that video to your phone and then share it to your Facebook personal profile. No one has the ability, no scheduler has the ability to touch personal profiles with a 10 foot pole yet. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I will say it, there is an unfair advantage. So just because you guys are here, this is a little like, hello, pay attention to this one. Um, there's an unfair advantage right now with uh, Facebook profiles. Let's see if we can actually see where my growth is at six weeks ago, I had, um, 25,000 followers on my Facebook profile and keep in mind, these are followers, not friends. And today we're going to cross 133,000 just by following the process I shared and then just uploading it also to my Facebook personal profile. Pretty cool, right? Okay. Yay. I love it. Okay. So the next thing I want to share with you, and this is a big one is, once in a while, we can go ahead and pull the screen share for a second. Um, once in a while, I will share. <laughs> I don't know who needs to hear this today, but if you're reading this, update your bios. Um, <laughs> this is a big one because people are by nature nosy. So when you're sharing value-based content consistently, clients are going to get nosy. They're going to go and snoop everywhere and see if you're legit and check out what you're putting on different platforms and where did you used to work? And so 
this is your stop, drop everything and update your bios check because sometimes we let it go for years and then they're like, well, I'm confused. It says you're still a hairstylist at this salon. Why would I hire you for social media or copywriting or whatever? Okay. So included with that is your LinkedIn bio. Drop a yes if you guys hear me loud and clear on this. This is an opportunity for you to straight up generate leads and opportunities every single day. So everything you do creates uh, an entire marketing ecosystem. So you post a TikTok video, that person goes and stalks you on Instagram, finds your Facebook profile, and then they go to your link in bio. Before you know it, they're applying for something. Um, you post a random tweet based on the processes I've been sharing. Before you know it, they are on your YouTube looking for the link in your bio, watching and binging every video you've created, even if it's only three. Okay. This is true nature. Um, who here has ever gone and creeped someone intensely? <laughs> you've gone and looked at all of their platforms to see what they're up to. I even need this reminder from time to time, um, but update it. So when it comes to your link in bio, there, it, there are one to four links that I think are absolutely necessary. So I'm going to share three that are optional, but one that you absolutely want to have in there. So it can work for you all the time. You guys cool with that? So when it comes to your link in bio, When it comes to your link in bio, I personally love this formula. It's simple until you become advanced. It works. So having a freebie, a case study, um, potentially if you have this, a YouTube video, one of your really good ones, the ones you're proud of. Like for me, it would be if I added a strategy that was really in-depth and I was like, oh, I know that people love this. It'll give a lot of value. And then this one is the only one as a freelancer you want to make sure you have. The rest are awesome though. Apply for a discovery call. This one should be in the link in your bio everywhere. I like to soften it with a little bit of value first and then having apply for a discovery call. But this is a great way for people to find you ultimately. Um, you I'll give you an example of a freebie. Sorry. Yeah, absolutely. So it's basically a freebie is a promotional or marketing tool where someone, I personally think of them as like value gives, mm -hmm. um, where someone enters their email and their first name in exchange for um, something of value. So that could be a cheat sheet, checklist, webinar, et cetera, all of those things. Thank you. Good question. Really good question. I will answer this question real fast. I take it you're no longer personal on your personal profile. I'm still decently halfway personal. The only difference is in the last year, I've pulled my kids 100% from all my social. Just as everything grows, I'm like, oh, this is getting a little intense and intimidating. And I want them to have their own identities outside of being my kids. So I'm still personal. I still share things that are personal wins and victories and personal photos, but I just don't share my kids, but that's true across the board. And so there's not really anywhere I share my kids except with the group chats that I have over text message. Okay. <laughs> so who here has already loved at least one of these? We've got content modeling. Oh, and let me show you in case anyone's like, what's a good, um, what can I use to basically have multiple links in bio? Um, you're going to be shocked by this answer. Metrical's mm -hmm. got it, which is pretty powerful. And I want to share this with you guys because this is pretty cool. So you have the ability to create straight up a set of links for each and every social media platform so you can track them differently. Oh, isn't that yep. gorgeous? <laughs> it comes with analytics. So like there's, we have one for Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And there are also spots for you to 
grow your other social media just by having them in place. Pretty neat, right? Okay, so here's the background too, if you want to add, you know, mm -hmm. backdrops or you can change the colors of the buttons. Yep. Really great. I think that's a really good point. I love this one because it's kind of like bubble gummy and candy. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can choose what your buttons and your text actually look like, which is really, really nice. And then of course, you can, once you create one, you can clone it for additional platforms so that you can track the analytics independently, which is pretty cool if you ask me. Woo, pretty fun, right? Pretty fun. Um, okay, let's dive into persuasion. I'm gonna just share a quick perspective switch. We can pull this um, slide down. So when a lot of people think of persuasion, how do I persuade clients to work with me? What I actually hear oftentimes is how can I make people work with me? Mm. Um, sometimes even when freelancers are asking, so like, how do I get my first client? Well, you can't force them. <laughs> I want to be super clear about that. So <laughs> it's interesting because when people ask about that, um, my big thought is you actually have to shift your entire perspective and you have to realize, okay, on the other side of this business is a person who is experiencing emotions and feelings and thoughts and like they matter too. So the single greatest way to persuade people to work with you is to actually completely do the opposite of everyone else. Everyone else is trying to persuade them to work with you. And instead just be a human that understands they're also human. Tap into empathy. A lot of freelancers are looking at things like a tug of war. Like, how do I pull these clients in? How do I convince them, pull them in? Um, how do I win this fight? When the truth is, if you actually drop the rope and cross over to their side, what's going to happen is you have the opportunity to listen to them. Now, one of the single greatest ways to do this and to tap into empathy with content creation is to start setting a little bit of time each week to reading the comments inside of Facebook groups on TikToks in your industry very quickly. And make sure you do this with a notebook and pen next to you so that you don't get off track. Um, very quickly in the comments, you're going to start to see that people are struggling you're going to see their specific struggles, their pain points. And one of the best things you can do for your business is to start creating content that meets that need. This was one of the ways that we have grown the fastest was I would see people struggle. We'd create a content piece that met the need of that. And suddenly it would go viral. It was wild for me. And so exactly. It is empathy. Instead of asking, how can I persuade clients to work with me? How can I listen to clients and make them feel valued and seen and heard and be the person that is offering the solution to their problem? Total perspective flip. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Yes, yes, yes. Who's going to try this? Because it is a game changer. It's it can also help boost SEO. I mean, if you're providing those resolutions directly mm -hmm. in your content, that's more people are going to want to come back to your content, come back to your brand. If you're providing those answers. Um, when I got verified on TikTok, I started noticing I got a lot of questions about how to get verified on TikTok, but they were always private mm -hmm. because nobody wants to be the person that looks thirsty <laughs> and is like, how do I get verified? Who do I have to pay to get verified? You know, so I created a YouTube video around it and it reached pretty quickly. I want to say 50,000 views. Mm -hmm. So it's really fascinating how those things work. It might actually be more than that by now. Um, so tap into empathy. Okay. Um, who here is already getting value today? Isn't this pretty cool? This is a good one. I'm that. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Amazing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to share a couple of really quick workflows with you guys. 
And these are things that are going to save you so much time. Um, if you're already working with clients or if you plan on working with clients in the future. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to share my screen with you. This is the reporting dashboard. Okay. Who here has ever had to create reporting for clients for one platform or for many? The more, the more terrifying, <laughs> right? So what I am going to recommend is Metricool's reporting. Okay. So once you've connected a client's platforms, either for scheduling or just to see the analytics in one dashboard all at once, there are less than five minute reporting options available. Okay. So I can pick one month or whatever time period I want. Um, I could do the month before, month before that, pick the language and then select the what what analytics I want on there. Now, LinkedIn, is it true, Aniston, that LinkedIn has not made available analytics for personal profiles? That is a great question. I'm pretty um, sure. I don't, a, yeah, I don't think so. I think it's across the board. They haven't unlocked that. Mm -hmm. But you get to choose what to sort by. You get to choose what to focus on for each platform and how many rows you want in each section. So I could pick 100, 100, 100, 100, or whatever you want to add. Play around till you like it. You can add your logo. So as you can see, um, actually, you can see it in the finished result. Um, my logo is on here, so it's branded. So it's all set to go for clients. And then this is where it gets cool. I can generate a PDF or a PowerPoint depending on how you present results to clients then you can actually set it up to automatically send reports to yourself or to your clients. So you can set it up so every month this process is automated. Gorgeous, right? Mm -hmm. Five minutes to automate your reporting. Drop a wow in the chat if this is as exciting to you as it is to me, because I know it sure is. It is I would get excited going through reports and just looking at it and I'm like, wow, this is crazy that this pulls it, all of your analytics into just one beautiful, beautiful document. <laughs> it is beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to share with you guys a little bit about scheduling because you can use this for yourself or you can use this for clients or both. You guys cool with that? But not only that, I'm going to show you how to create uh, basically content that crushes it. Um, some of this will be optional. If you're not a fan of AI copy, just plug your ears for like two minutes. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to just share this workflow because in a perfect world, we would all sit down at a typewriter and write the most beautiful, poetic, viral pieces of content every single day. I actually have a typewriter. I love my typewriter, but I don't get to use it enough. <laughs> Do you guys ever sit there and like you listen to the writers that constantly take off and they're like, this morning I went to the farmer's market and I spent three hours picking the perfect piece of cilantro for my dinner. <laughs> and I thought, this reminds me of a good book. <laughs> I love that for them. <laughs> but... That is not always the day-to-day -day for all of us, right? Especially not if you have littles, especially not if you have fur babies, especially not if you are traveling a lot. That's not what life looks like. So I want to share with you some workflows that I've been absolutely loving, um, and they have been game changers for me just straight up. So you know how we did the competitor research and then came up with the idea to do content modeling? Uh, I'm going to share with you guys one step of this is optional. You can do this yourself if you want. Now, I learned to appreciate AI copy, which is not perfect, um, but I learned to appreciate it in the last few months. So I'm going to use... For those who might not know, can you explain just a little bit? 
AI copy. Yeah. So basically copy that is written by artificial intelligence is something that you can use to aid you each and every day in creating better pieces of work. Now, some people will be like, I used AI copy to write a book. And if you do that and it turns out great. But what I recommend is just using it as a way to kind of support your process. So if you've done the research and you've done, okay, this is the general vibe I want, et cetera, you can use AI copy to support you. Now, chat GPT is free. It is current, but, but there's the downside. It's at capacity a lot. And so it can be hit or miss whether or not you can use it. So I'm going to use Jasper. This step is optional. You can write your own things if you would like. If you get inspired throughout the day and you're all caffeinated and all of that, amazing. But I'm going to share with you guys how to get this process going, okay? So let's go ahead and share my screen. So let's say I am tired. Anyone else ever been tired you know how hard it is to create something brilliant when you're tired? <laughs> you're like, how much caffeine can I put into one body? <laughs> so, for example, I am tired today. I'll just be super honest. Aniston is tired, right? We just arrived in Florida last night, got here at 2 a.m., which is super fun. Okay, it is fun. But my brain isn't thinking of my brightest thoughts today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work a little bit with copy AI or AI copy, a better way to put it, until it helps me to formulate something that is 75% or halfway decent. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can tweak it. But if you told me to say something brilliant, I'd be like, don't waste time and do good things <laughs> today. So instead... I'm going to allow the copy to get my creative juices flowing, okay? So we're going to use what we modeled earlier. And I'm going to just say, don't waste time scrolling on social media. Now, now fun fact, um, not everybody loves Jasper because of the price point. I think it's like... 47 or $97 a month, but this is kind of neat. There's a Rachel Peterson tone of voice and it is over the top perky. Um, but I like to use like bold confidence tone of voice. Um, and you can use those in chat GPT if you get in that particular day. So I'm going to go ahead and just create and see what it creates because don't waste time on scrolling on social media is not inspiring anybody. Okay, the, some of these are actually halfway close. Do you guys see how much better that already is? Don't let precious moments slip away scrolling through your social. And then I would just change the second part of that sentence. Kind of neat, right? Quit watching others live and start living. See, it's inspiring some thoughts. So I would go through one by one and then just tweak them until they're right for my voice. Um, we could see what the Rachel Peterson tone sounds like real fast, and you guys could feel free to give it a try, but I don't know how well it does with like this type of thing. So we'll find out. I love that there's your own tone of voice. <laughs> <laughs> this actually sounds like me. It does. <laughs> Whoa. Stop scrolling down the rabbit hole of social yep. media doing something that truly matters. <laughs> I would so say that. Okay. So it's kind of neat because I like the way that it writes in my tone, but even without my tone, even if you're using chat GPT, or if you're doing this manually with one quote at a time, what you're going to want to do is create a quote bank. Drop an emoji if you're obsessed because I am. So I have a quote bank that I just have been slowly adding to. And over time, it just gets a little more robust. And I still have like 20 more to add to it that I've written and then tested in the last week. Um, so this quote bank is really powerful because instead of just saying something and then hoping you remember it, you won't. Um, this allows you to basically set yourself up for success. Now, at another point, I'll teach 
a, a more in-depth thing. We'll probably do this. I feel like I want to teach this like next month because it's so good, Aniston, but we'll, yeah. we'll get there. Who's going to be here <laughs> next month when we do another masterclass? Um, but what I love is there is actually a feature inside of Metricool that creates auto lists. Hey, yo. Yo. <laughs> and auto lists allow you to create, you can add from a file, from a CSV, a set of content or a huge set of content that constantly rotates. We have like a whole tutorial on auto lists, don't we, on YouTube? Because we're running short on time. We do, I think. Who's going to give this a try? Because I'll just tell you, you guys, even if it's not my most engaged content on Twitter, LinkedIn, my Facebook page, and Instagram, I have content that is constantly going out Monday through Friday. So even if I'm not on social that day and I decide like it's time for a me day, at least on four platforms, I'm there. Pretty cool, right? So I recommend, um, do, you, do you guys want to grab the link to that, that um, training or tutorial? Yeah, let me find it. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So auto lists are one way to do this. Now I'm going to show, I know a few people were asking about um, scheduling. So if you wanted to schedule at different times, um, you, you would want to go ahead and ready. If I wanted it to be on Twitter, I'd go to my quote bank, grab my gorgeous quote. You can even create a thread. Um, Twitter threads are able to be scheduled. Probably hit publish now or schedule and hit save. What I love about the quote bank, you guys, is you can, I want you to hear this loud and clear. You can schedule the same content across all platforms at the same time straight up because not everyone sees it at the same time. Some people watch things more than once or read things more than once. Some people don't open Instagram till they're in bed. Anyone love that idea? Sometimes content doesn't take off for a while. Sometimes it has a short shelf life. So you okay, can so sorry, we don't have a YouTube video, but okay. that's a good idea because yeah that's easy to make. But we did drop a link to our blog. And it if you read that it has info about auto list. So mm -hmm. make sure to read that. Beautiful. That is for you guys in the comments. Um, now, if you want to really and truly fill out your entire schedule, I'm a fan of saying like, okay, I want to have this number of quote based content pieces this many graphic-based content pieces, um, and then this many video-based content pieces. Now, I find that for attracting clients, video is by far the best, but I do like quote-based content because it kind of grabs eyeballs too. It really and truly does. So I am a huge fan of just loading these up and getting them ready to go. Here we go, we'll add one more. And this one, this one would work on a Facebook page. This one would work on LinkedIn. This one would work, actually those three will be good. And save. And you get to decide which platforms you wanna share them on. Okay. We can go ahead and pull the screen share. There are no negatives to posting the same content on multiple platforms. Nope. <laughs> As long as you pull the watermark, you are good to go. Are quotes based on your quotes or quotes from others? They're my quotes. Once in a great while, I'll share a quote from someone else, um, but that's not super common. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you guys want to drop the link and the code for Metricool one more time? And who yes. here is going to check out Metricool? 30 days free of premium. Um, can you guys see why I love to work with them so much? Cause we've got a similar vibe. It's really fun. And 
their tool is absolutely incredible. It straight up can transform your productivity. And I'm willing to bet all of you guys are super excited to give it a try. So anything else? Are you good, Aniston? I think I'm good. If anyone has any last minute questions or if they're watching a recording later, you can still drop comments and we'll make sure to get those answered. But thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, Rachel, for being here, even though I know that you're exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's Friday. It's the weekend. Yay, and it's the weekend. we just got some awesome insights, some awesome info. And now everyone's going to go crush it. <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone go have such a great start to your weekend we'll see you all soon bye, bye for